Today on In Grace, we're digging for marine creatures in Kansas. Ever since I was a boy, I've been fascinated with God's creation. I'm traveling the planet to tell His story about His world. I'm Jim Scudder, Jr. Come with me on another exciting adventure in grace. Welcome to In Grace. I'm Jim Scudder, Jr. We have brought you to a fossil dig out in the middle of Kansas, and it's a tropical storm. We have everything against us, but we're still going to bring you a really great television program showing you that there's proof in the ground that God created the heavens and the earth, and he also judged the earth with a global flood. This is going to be awesome. We're with Dr. Carl Ball. Enjoy today's In Grace. Last time on In Grace, we arrived early in the morning at the amazing Grace Ranch in Kansas, and they fed us a hearty breakfast. After that, we went digging, and we found an incredible fossilized fish. But there were many other fossils just laying all over the place out there, like clams and shark's teeth. Dr. Ball, I've gone to beaches in Florida looking for shark's teeth. I wasn't expecting to find shark's teeth here in the middle of Kansas. Here in the thousands of acres in the plains of Kansas, the prairie, well, some of the shark's teeth are smilodon teeth. They're that big. Wow. But this is a tiny tooth, but it, it's essentially perfect. But these tiny little serrations show that this creature was designed, when he was old enough to eat, designed to cut into other flesh and very quickly get him out of his misery and make him part of the food chain. That's part of God's design. One of the other young ladies just now discovered these two little fish vertebrae. And if you were to look very closely, you could determine which is the front, which is the back, in order to make the movement very pliable. But notice it's compressed. Mm -hmm. Now that's very significant. Why would it be compressed when fishes are designed almost like an egg? The fish vertebrae are almost like an egg. It's hard to crush them. There had to be, while this was still pliable, shortly after it was alive, there had to be tremendous compression forces down upon it with other layers. And we find this regularly. So this tells an amazing story. Uh, the context screams loudly, flood, worldwide flood. And that's found amidst the, the clams. This would have been a, a larger one with the the baby clams uh, on Here's the on mother the clam. Here's the ridge, mm -hmm. one of the ridges of a big mother clam. There's a mucus that holds them together to incubate them until they can swim off on their own. And that's, again, a beautiful part of God's design to provide for them until they're able to do their thing. Now, what good is a clam other than shark food? Clams actually have sieve systems and uh, mollusks have sieve systems where they pump the water through and cleanse it of the chemistry, even radioactive chemistry. So they're a part of the design of the creation. And I was just handed something that uh, I'm not sure if I should be holding. Uh, did you lick that to determine? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but uh, one of the camera guys can do that. Okay, we'll assign that. Pastor, you are actually holding fish poop. Oh, lovely. This literally is the biodegraded, what's left of the biodegraded fish poop. Because again, the entire cycle has to function. I mean, excrement is as important as the nutrients that we take in. And so that's what's left. Wow. That's fish poop. Nice. Fossil nice. fish poop. <laughs> the, <laughs> things, the things that we would discover on oh, In Grace. You, you, on In Grace. You can't get this on any other TV show. That, that's right. <laughs> they need to stay tuned in. <laughs> in these layers, they find a few dinosaurs, not many. Uh, they find marvelous mosasaur marine creatures. Zephactinus, very aggressive, sometimes large fishes. Uh, one of them excavated just 12 miles from where we're standing. It's 14 feet long, 
and he swallowed his neighbor, same kind of fish, four feet long, and the two are in the Sternberg Museum together is a world-class display. When we're talking about these, all these marine creatures, invertebrates, vertebrates, why were they here in a, in a creation model? Now, the evolutionary model is the inland sea. Right. So that's how they would explain it. This was all, they wouldn't say an ocean, right? It, or, the Niobrara formation. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. So then how would a creation scientist explain these marine creatures in the middle of Kansas. All right, you actually have a body, an echospheric context. Uh, Like runs with like. In Sicily, there are hundreds of thousands of horse fossils, fossils, all thrown together, horses running together. Uh, You have other parts of the world where, where you have vast areas like these clams, and in Texas, same thing, but among the clams, you have fishes that fed on the clams, fishes, plural, various species and varieties of fishes, like Zephactinus, a very predatorial uh, fish. Uh, you have them here by the hundreds of thousands as fossils, by the millions by implication. Simultaneously, you have pterodactyls who feed on fish and clams. In Papua New Guinea, clams are the favorite food for the pterodactyls that they cite, they call Dewas and Ropin, and they're alive today, uh, but that has to be verified to the satisfaction of modern science. So there's a total ecosphere. You, you have prey and predator, you so, have food supply. So in the pre-flood world, yes, was this an ocean, a sea, or were these creatures transported here? Probably both. But this probably was an area where you did have a sea and you had lagoons. So you already had an ecosphere where you have the food supply. And if you devour a few million of these, you've got billions waiting. So there's no problem. That's part of the food chain. And and these creatures are not reflectively conscious, uh, reflecting on God, but they they do reflect and they're part of the ecosphere, but they're designed to feed another part of the ecosphere. The world was a lot different before the flood. It was a lot different until the flood came. Even even the continents, uh, everything has changed. Everything has changed. So, but but the the creation model would say that these creatures would have lived nearby here, and they would have been buried here in the flood. That's correct. Nearby, at least within transportable distance, Mm -hmm. and in multitudinous numbers. Uh, And the pre-flood world was saturated with beauty and design and availability, but we're the ones who wrecked it. It's not these creatures that did. This is a worldwide, the flood gives evidence of judgment and these creatures didn't deserve it, but we brought this on them and and we need, we need some grace. I think these speak very loudly to how bad sin is. How bad sin is. I think people don't realize how bad when it, when it is that we rebel against our Creator. Our sin of rebellion cost them their lives and their existence. Our sin, and it's because of our sin that God had to, uh, you see, we learn if you live, we're probably, you and I are probably gonna live to be 90, 110, if we get the biosphere and spend some time in the biosphere, uh, that would be optimal. And I keep learning. I learn something new every day. You keep learning. I know you. You learn something new every day. So we assimilate knowledge and then we influence by what we assimilate. Well, what if we lived eight or 900 years? We had an unregenerate heart. The influence of our lives would permeate everyone else and they would permeate everyone else. Finally, the very imagination of the thoughts of man's heart was only evil continually. And God essentially said, I've had enough because they're destroying them and destroying the beautiful creation. I created them as the apex of the creation. They're destroying themselves. So in the flood, while we have judgment, we also have grace. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Millions of marine fossils in the middle of Kansas? 
What can explain this? Evolution's millions of years or the Bible and the story of a global catastrophic flood? For your gift to In Grace, we will send you this exciting DVD, Fossil Fishing. For gifts of $25 or more, you will also receive the DVD, Dinosaurs That Destroy Evolution. Call now, 800-78-GRACE, or visit ingrace.tv to get your copy. Now, we had to move inside because there is a tropical storm in June, hitting the center of our country, Cristobal is coming over. And I don't think that is typical for Kansas. But it's typical for us. <laughs> you and I live on the edge. The devil doesn't like us, and we don't like him either. But we love people. And no matter what the price to pay, if it's the right thing to do, we try to do it. That's your style, that's your commitment in life. and. Uh, it matches what I like to do as well. We are here examining a very special specimen that was excavated on this property, the Godivan property, uh, the Dodrell Godivan property. Two of the Smith boys and David Reeves were horsing around at the dig as they shouldn't have been. Benjamin slid down the side of the hill and he saw one little vertebrae, that one right there. That's all he saw. From that, we started excavating because it was connected to something else. Most of the time, you just find a single vertebrae. But this turned out to be almost five feet long. It is a zephactinus, and we have the head, which is very rare and, and very special. We have the, the, the special protrusion under the back of the head, but what amazes me is not only do we have all of the vertebrae, but we have these two fins with a cartilage attached that attach them to the fleshly body. That's flesh that has been fossilized mm. there and there. So one for this side, one for this side. So we have both of the frontal fins. So that uh, relates to immediate burial, and it also relates to the fact that we should not despise the day of small beginnings from that one single vertebrae. We have this beautiful Zephactinus, uh, aggressive, Cretaceous, Niobrara fossil that was impacted, compressed instantly in a worldwide flood. I've saved, Pastor, one of the most important features for last, and it's called the death pose. You've been with me in Colorado. We went over to Dinosaur National Monument. You saw the arched back of these and neck of these dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. Many of the fish and fishes, different species of fish, have the same death pose, and that is the case here. The mouth is open. The back, the neck is distended, very pronounced. And most paleontologists attribute that to suffocation. Well, they're admitting that it had to be quite rapid when they do that. But more often than not, there's evidence of electrocution, which suffocation doesn't completely cause the arching, but electrocution does. These guys suffocated fast and were electrocuted in the uh, perilous waters of the flood. Mm -hmm. And there's only been one worldwide flood. And the moral of the story is, if you goof off, make sure you discover something like this. That really is one of the good moral statements <laughs> <laughs> of the entire episode. This is a rarely well-preserved fossil. Beautiful. When you are digging here, uh, you just uncover all these marine fossils and we're walking over, I mean, shards of clam shells and all this other stuff, getting to the, the one you know, object that we're looking for. And I understand that you probably could find that all over this whole area, this whole state. 
How else could that be explained? I mean, how how can someone say that that all happened over long periods of time rather than a sudden, quick catastrophe? Some of these fish are eating fish. This happened yes. in, a, in a moment. In order not to see this, a scholar or just a casual observer has to willfully reject what they see. It fits the Bible, but yet many people reject it. They'll, they'll come up with any other explanation for geology and fossils other than a global flood. Any explanation. A meteor, uh, you know, you, you, they'll just they'll come up with any other explanation except the global flood. Well, that tells me something. They are the, deliberately, the bias. willfully, yes. the, the bias is willfully refusing to retain God in their knowledge, right. in their thought process. The beautiful thing about this is God has revealed himself. Uh, he's, a, uh, he's a good God. He's a God of love. He's just. He has to be. If he's good, he has to be just. He has to punish sin. I don't deserve heaven. Ne oh, I certainly don't. And you see, Pastor Jim, it isn't just a God. It is a specific God who has revealed himself. It's not just nirvana, just a thought about heavenly places. It, it's, you know, I learned that there are 20 billion gods in Hinduism. Hmm. People create their own gods and they multiply those gods and, and they think that's fine. Well, God loves them as well but innately he reveals himself as the specific God of creation. And God set apart the Jewish nation to declare who that God really is. And that God himself, in the person of his son, appeared to us in time. Mm. God himself, like uh, Abraham's ram caught in the thicket, mm -hmm. Abraham, don't sacrifice your son, even though he was obeying to do so. God stopped him at the right moment, and he said very specifically, God will provide himself the sacrifice. So it's not just that God himself will provide the sacrifice. God will provide himself, himself as the sacrifice, and he did. So if we say, in the midst of all the trouble you've had, and everybody has, how do you know God even cares? Mm. Look at Calvary. Mm. He did it all right there. If he never does anything else for me, for you, for everyone in this audience, if he never does anything else, he's done enough to demonstrate his love for all eternity. Look at Calvary. He died for us. I hope you've learned a little bit about fossils, about why there would be marine creatures in the middle of Kansas, and a little bit more about God and the truth that He loves you and that He also has to judge sin. Rebellion has to be put down. Evil has to be punished. But you know what? Even though we've sinned, even though we've rebelled, even though we have been evil, God still loves you and he's demonstrated that, he's proven that by sending his son, Jesus, who never sinned, but he still died on the cross, innocent, never sinned, but he died on the cross for our sins. Let this, this is one of the fossils that we found, represent sin. This is you and me, we all have sin. We've all sinned, we've all fallen short of the glory of God, we all deserve hell. You say, no, I don't deserve hell. We all deserve hell. We all de deserve to be eternally separated from God in the place that he created for the devil and the demons, and that is an eternal lake of fire. But that's not what God wants. Jesus had no sin. Watch what he did. He was made sin for us. That's 2 Corinthians 5.21. For he, God, had made him Christ, who knew no sin, to be made sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness, watch, of God in him. When you receive Jesus Christ as your savior, watch what happens. You have eternal life. He is in you by the spirit of God. He will never lose you or forsake you. It's not by works. It's not by trying to do good. It's not by trying to be better. 
because we can never be good enough. That's why Jesus paid it all on the cross for our sins and arose. And he paid for your sins. And if you'll just simply believe in him, trust in him by faith, you will have everlasting life. As it's raining here today in Kansas, which is a rarity, but we're in the middle of a tropical storm of all things, it reminds me of the rains that came upon this earth in judgment of God during the flood. The Bible speaks of another judgment, never by a global flood again, but by fire. This world will be destroyed. There is an end to all the madness that's around us. So today is the day of salvation. After filming in Kansas, we had to leave, but the team continued to dig and brought home to the laboratory in Texas a beautiful Zephactinus, which they're restoring as we speak. Millions of marine fossils in the middle of Kansas? What can explain this? Evolution's millions of years or the Bible and the story of a global catastrophic flood? You need to get this DVD for your kids and grandkids because they're under attack and they need this information. And it's an exciting adventure. I'd encourage you to stop what you're doing and order this incredible DVD today. And don't forget, when you order something from In Grace, that helps us keep producing exciting gospel-based TV shows. For your gift to In Grace, we will send you this exciting DVD, Fossil Fishing, with Dr. Carl Baugh and Jim Scudder Jr. For gifts of $25 or more, you will also receive the popular DVD, Dinosaurs That Destroy Evolution. Call now, 800-78-GRACE, or visit ingrace.tv to get your copy. Tune in next week as an American hero tells his story of survival on 9-11. I was in the Pentagon on 9-11, and as I looked up, I had the thought, this is a big target. This would be pretty easy to uh, fly an airplane into. And at 9.36, we felt a large explosion. I said, we just got to tank. There wasn't any doubt in my mind. You definitely want to set your DVR and record every single In Grace episode. Don't miss one of them. You will be so blessed as we learn all about God's world and God's Word. In Grace is a viewer-supported ministry. Thank you for your prayers and gifts.